baseball. I'm going to do it with Steve Gardner, lead baseball writer for USA Today. Uh, To neo Nazis and white supremacists, white supremacists, and so forth. But they played along with the government at every step of the way. Action today. It's guaranteed or your money back. Feed your loan. Feed it. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. 5845 UConn, 946 to play second half. Once again, let's check in with our courtside reporter, Andy Katz, sponsored by the Disney Bundle. Disney what? Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Get the Disney Bundle plan starting at $12.99 a month. Offer valid for eligible subscribers only. Terms apply. See the DisneyBundle.com for details. Andy. Well, thank you, Kevin. I am with a special guest, Kemba Walker. Can you believe it was 12 years ago in this building that you led UConn to a national championship? What's that like to think it was 12 years ago? It made me feel old, to be honest. Um, but to be honest, it just it feels like yesterday. It feels like yesterday. I remember every moment of it. And, you know, to be here with this, you know, be able to watch this special group right here, it's, a, it's an honor to be back. You were on quite a run in 2011. This team has been on an unbelievable streak, blowing out the competition in March Madness. How would you describe what they are accomplishing right now? It's fun to, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. They got the whole world watching these guys. Their run has been very special. It's, 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 it's bringing back a lot of flashbacks to when I was playing, for sure. I appreciate it, Kemba. You're a free agent, but you're, you're not done, right? I'm not done. Not at all. Not yet. Yeah. 
I don't know if he's got any eligibility. Back to you guys. All right, Andy, thanks very much. Calcaterra off the inbound. Now working it over to Kimball Walker. Yeah, Jackson down the right side of the lane, gets inside, ball knocked out of his hands, and out of bounds, it'll stay with the Huskies, nine to shoot. You hear Bensley Joseph, he heard the play call from Dan Hurley, and he's yelling out triple screen, triple screen. Yeah, and he jumped it too. He kept Calcaterra from coming off the screen. And a turnover on the inbound. It was tipped into the hands of Wong, leaping towards the Yukon bench. He saved it to Pack. That's video room defense right there. Yep. Here's Omir. Pack, by the way, back out on the four point with new kicks. Wong over on the right side trying to penetrate. Now he go back to work down that right side. Gets trapped down low and a turnover. Throws it out of bounds and off the court. Far, far away from Jim Jackson. What? Because no one stepped up and grabbed it before it got back to the stands. I would have had it already. You would have been all over that. All yep. over. Yep. You're welcome. How many times do I have to say thank you? <laughs> Keep going. Andre, Andre Jackson will bring it up the floor. It's our new segment. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah. Aline will weave it over to Jackson. Jackson. The skip out to the left side, a lean for three. That's not going to go. Omir tip of the rebound around, but Klingon's got it now. There is a foul on the floor. Klingon is, of course, 7 2. Omir is 6 7. Somebody had hook. They gave Omir the foul, but will yeah. they look for a hook and hold there? I can't tell. Or is it just because he's so much bigger? No matter what he does, he's going to. Yeah, I wouldn't hook. think so. It's basically just they knew he was locked in. Somebody had locked his arm down. And, you know, in a challenge shoot with the movement. It's hard to get a body on a rolling big man and yeah. then be able to get in front and force him out once the shot goes up. UConnell inbounds. Caravan off the inbound. Dribbles to the top to Calcaterra. 14 to shoot for UConn. Up 58-45. Newton with 10 on the shot clock. Dribbling on the right wing. Picks up his dribble. Needs some help. Finds it from Caravan. Left wing three. In and out. No good. Rebound knocked out of the hands of Miller. Second chance for UConn. A lean. Turns and floats it up from five feet away. And UConn by 15. Another missed opportunity for Miami. Grabbing a rebound and a timeout taken by the Hurricanes. 58 or 60 to 45. UConn with the advantage. 826 remaining in the second half. Timeout Miami. We'll step aside as well. 6045 UConn. You're listening to the men's final four on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Do you want to know what's trending now? You can defer payments of a full net suite implementation for six months. No payments and no interest for six months. This is a big deal. NetSuite by Oracle has never made an offer like this in its 22 years as a leading cloud financial system. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, gaining visibility and control over their financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. Everything they need to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity across every department. In fact, almost 90% of finance leaders agree that NetSuite helps them reduce manual data entry time. Whether your business generates millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, take advantage of this special financing offer of no payments or interest for six months at netsuite.com slash hoops. That's netsuite.com slash hoops. netsuite.com slash hoops. Great looking uniforms are an expression of teamwork, confidence, and pride. Cintas can help make sure your team is dressed to perform their best every day. We offer workwear and apparel that's comfortable and durable with a modern fit. From work shirts and pants to polos and khakis to Oxfords or T-shirts. And it all comes with weekly laundry service and delivery right to you. To learn more, visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Jason Orwood, Doug Gottlieb, back with you here inside Energy Stadium, 60-45. to 45, UConn leading Miami, 826 to go here in the ballgame. Winner gets San Diego State Monday night for a championship, Doug. Uh, unlike the teams, the previous part of this tournament when UConn got up by 20, Miami had a run, but now all of a sudden it's another 7-0 spurt by the Huskies. It, it, it is, and remember, this is a UConn team that I think you see the weak, you, know, you can hear the weakness in not having a true point guard. Miami cranked up the pressure, got a couple steals, but... 
Nice little counterpunch here these last couple minutes, causing Miami to call, call a timeout 28 seconds before the automatic TV timeout. Getting the ball inside, hitting jump shots, getting stops defensively, and again, using Klingon without Sonogo and still not seeing him drop off. Yeah, no question about that on the interior. We'll see if they've got one more push here in this game to make it interesting or if UConn will blow out another team and route to the title game. Go back downstairs to Kevin Kugler. Now, UConn has not trailed this entire game. 8.26 to go, and they're up by 15 at this point, 60 to 45. Huskies and Hurricanes battling to take on San Diego State, who shocked FAU with a buzzer beater from Butler to win the first game. 7 0 run for UConn ongoing here. And very critical, too, for Miami that you don't have empty possessions. You, you got to figure out ways to get to the free throw line to get a quality shot up. And it comes to Joseph in the right corner. Joseph with 15 to shoot. He'll swing it up top to Wong. Wong around an O'Meara screen. Dishes left side to Miller. Miller trying to find room to roam. Bumps Caravan. None fades away. Shot won't go. O'Meara with the offensive rebound. Muscles it over. Clinging it in on the right block. Well, that was a tough shot. Great rebound. And then he had to get it up over. Clinging and go high on the glass to do so. Six points, six boards for Omir, Caravan, and Klingon on the floor. They've expanded that lead again with this lineup out there like they did in the first half. Newton driving inside, lost the handle on the ball. It's underneath Omir like a hen sitting on an egg. He then picks it up and calls a tie-up, and possession arrow favors Miami. Omir couldn't believe a tie-up was called. He said, I had the ball. The official said, no, it was a tie-up on the floor, and it'll belong to Miami. So Sonogo returns now, but again, Caravan and Klingon providing excellent minutes for UConn. It's part of the strength of this Huskies team, the depth and the quality they get from Klingon. Quality. quality of depth is a very important part. Yep. Nigel Pack around the Omir screen, splits two defenders, gives it to Omir, roll into the rim, it's the layup and the rebound by Sonogo, and we've got a tie-up again, possession arrow, we'll keep it with UConn. Risky right there, Omir, to go after the tie-up, but able to get away with it and reverse the jump ball possession back to Miami after this. Oh, he was so upset that he missed that layup. Yeah. He wasn't going to let that. Too. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. He should have converted that one. Yeah. But he is playing with three fouls as they break a little pressure. Jackson to the other end of the floor and an angry two-hand hammer. Oh, my goodness. Cock and fire as Jackson flushes it home. UConn up 62-47. Boy, I love the attack against that pressure. And when Jackson gets ahead of steam, forget about it. They'll flip it around to the left side. Will Miami to Joseph. Joseph will bounce it to Omir. Puts it on the deck. Sonogo there, but he goes left to right and wraps it around to lay it in. 62-49 UConn. 6.45 to go. Newton across the timeline. Bounces it over to Jackson. 15 to shoot for Andre Jackson, Jr. They're working around in Newton. Eight on the shot clock. Sonogo sets the screen. Newton, a three, top of the key. Climbs off the rim. No good. And a rebound ripped away by Jordan Miller of Miami. Now long to push. Left to right. Skip to Joseph. Right corner three. Got it. Big bucket for Miami. Joseph with a three. And it's a 10-point game with 6.05 to go. UConn has led from start to right now. Miami at 58% shooting in the second half after shooting just 25% in the first. And Danny Hurley about to get Jordan Hawkins and Alex Caravan back on the floor. Jackson trying to lob it into Sonogo. Had to bounce out on the left block to get it. Now he'll go to work against Omir. Wong digging down and gets the takeaway. Wong with a steal. On the push. Wong loping to the basket. Calcaterra has it. Thrown towards the sideline. Out of bounds and a belong to UConn. And that's excellent transition defense so no will play with it a little too long calcaterra got back was able to swipe the ball away at the last minute from wall and then had the presence to save it pat tried to save it on the back end but ultimately turned it over back to uconn 
Great defensive play. You're exactly right, Jim. Calcaterra never gave up on it. Yep. You get that. You score that now. The lead is down to eight. Well, full court pressure here applied by the Canes again as that ball is being inbounded on the baseline. Last time we saw this, it ended up in an Andre Jackson Jr. hammer on the other end. Yeah. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, your home for the national championships. 820 WWBA Largo. The radio station. AM 20, 96.7 FM, Tampa, 98.3 FM, Pinellas, a Genesis communication station. Have a little pause for a contact lens replacement. And keep in mind, Andre Jackson can't move because it wasn't a made basket. Saw that in the Texas game where it was a turnover. Off of a dead ball possession. No real pressure on the inbound, though. Gives it up to Newton. Now Newton harassed as he brings it up by Joseph. Just got it across the timeline. Newton gets it to Jackson. Back it comes to Newton immediately with 13 to shoot. Here's Jackson. Flips it behind to Newton on the right wing. Newton will bounce a hard bounce to Sonogo on a blocking foul. Wong in there trying to take the charge, but a beat late as Sonogo turned, and the foul called on Wong his first. Well, a good call. You're exactly right, Kevin. Just a fraction late, and he jumped right into the path. Didn't really give Sonogo any room to pivot. Yeah. He slid right into him. Inbound coming. After the 16 foul on Miami, and it comes right to Jackson with a little right-hand hook from five feet away, and it's 64-52, UConn now by 12. Coming up on five to play in the national semifinals. Beasley Joseph working it around to Pack. Pack drives down the left side of the lane. Nothing there. Underhands it now to Miller. Miller in the paint. Got Caravan in the air, took up the shot, and a foul is going to be called. Nice little shot fake by Jordan Miller. But you can't give up that underneath out of bounds play. I mean, goodness. when you're trying to make a run, you want to force this UConn team to have contested shots. That one was it was uh, executed um, perfectly, but it was given up because that inside pass was able to be negotiated. Haven't been too many free throws either, Jim. No. Either way, this has been a pretty cleanly played game as far as that goes. Only the second team foul on UConn in this second half. Six against Miami. First free throw is good. Kevin Cooper, Jim Jackson, Clark Kellogg here at our Granger courtside seats at NRG Stadium. Just like basketball, your business wins with speed. Granger's fast delivery means industrial supplies and solutions. Get to you with the speed you need. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Both free throws good. Miami within 10. Andre Jackson Jr. hands it off to Sonogo. Sonogo to flip now to Newton. Newton will curl around to the right side. Jackson lobbing to Sonogo. It went through his fingertips and out of bounds. It'll be a turnover back to Miami with 4.31 to go. And that was the read because Omir heads really hard, and it, Sonogo was open on the backside. The, the pass just wasn't delivered where it needed to be. Bensley Joseph will walk it up for Miami from left to right. Feeds it to Miller. Miller working down the left side of the lane. Caravan there tried to wrap the pass around out of trouble. Had it kicked around, batted around. Connecticut keeps it. Hawkins on the other end. Quick jumper. Won't go. Hawkins got his own rebound. Works inside the eight feet. Backs to the right corner. Caravan drives into the paint. Jumper. Rolls around and home. And he's fouled. UConn making all the hustle plays. And another one that's an and one opportunity with 405 to play. Well, they do such a really good job of keeping pressure on the defense, attacking, spacing the floor, moving. That's why they average 18 assists a game and it's 21 a game in the tournament. Well, the quick shot by Hawkins. He's had numbers. So when right. he came back exactly. off, the defense was scrambling. The caravan could have very easily settled for a three-point shot. But he pumped fake, put it on the deck, and he picked up the foul. Aline will come in for Hawkins now, 66-54. UConn by 12, 4.05 to go. Caravan at the line for one up to the foul on Bensley Joseph. His third free throw rims out no good to O'Meer for Miami. Now Nigel Pack. From left to right, Omir driving on Sonogo on a hand check on Sonogo. Just his first and just the third team foul 
on UConn. Seven have been whistled against Miami in this second half, and that takes us to the under four. Media timeout, 3.57 to play. UConn trying to win their way to the title game with a 66-54 lead over Miami. You're listening to the men's final four on the Westwood One NCAA radio network. Are you the parent of a two to seven year old? Listen closely for an exciting free radio offer. By now you've probably heard of ABC Mouse, the Parents' Choice Award winning online learning program that's actually changing the lives of early learners everywhere. ABC Mouse is like a little one-on-one teacher. It has helped her so much. Right now we're offering a special radio promo to try it free for a month, but you have to go to abcmouse.com slash radio to claim your free month. That's abcmouse.com slash radio. Sponsored by Age of Learning. Technology lets you access a personal trainer from home, like on this exercise mirror. Less talking, more squatting. But to keep your hybrid workforce in shape, you need more than technology. And kick. And jump. You need PCs powered by Intel vPro custom configured by CDW. Hardware-based security and remote management make it easy to protect and monitor PCs from anywhere. Wait, don't turn me off. Intel vPro makes secure remote management possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash vPro. <laughs> Lowe's MVP's bonus days are back for pros. Right now, buy a DeWalt 20-volt max power stack battery two-pack at $199 and get a select DeWalt Bear tool free. Plus, earn three times the bonus points on all Metabo HPT tools and products. Shop even more savings and bonus points offers during MVP's bonus days at Lowe's. Bonus points calculated before taxes and fees after applicable discounts have been about 320 through 331. Subject to change. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, discount taken at time of purchase. Visit Lowe's.com slash MVP's bonus points for details. From town councils to Capitol Hill, agents who are realtors are advocating for what's right. We're working to increase affordable housing supply and ensure fair housing for all. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. Hi, I'm Kelsey Grammer. Wounded Warrior Project supports injured veterans by connecting them with fellow warriors, by serving them through mental health and wellness programs, and by empowering them to live on their own terms. No one should face a battle alone. Join us at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Ever just want to start over? Take a mulligan in life. With a smooth, clean Barbasol shave, every day is a clean slate. So who cares if you put all your money in crypto and called your boss an idiot? Start fresh with Barbasol. It's a can of can-do. Barbasol. 66-54, UConn with a lead. 3.57 to play in this second half. Time for the fact of the game. Sponsored by Angie. With Angie, it's easier than ever to get home projects done well. Get started at Angie.com. Miami Hurricanes are the 21st team ever to beat both of the top two seeds in their own region. But how about this? Of the previous 20, 1985 Villanova is the only one that could win a national championship. Out of everybody that knocked off the one and the two in their group, only one won a national title. And barring a rally... 1985 Villanova will stay as the only one in that group. Yep. 66-54, UConn by 12 with 357 remaining in this one. Miami has certainly shot the ball better in the second half, 8 of 14 from the floor. But they have not gotten enough stops on the other end. As the inbound comes, Sonogo tips it, but Pack grabs it. Jumper for Pack off the left side of the iron. No good, and Caravan cradles the rebound for UConn. Well, you, UConn is shooting 48%. Throughout the course of the year, Miami's been so good offensively, but they've given up to their opponents 45% field goal shooting. So better than average, and right there, an easy opportunity on the lob. And Newton with the lob. And the two-hand flush for Andre Jackson Jr. And a 68-54 advantage for UConn. And the officials stop play. The rim and the standard was shaking. And I'm not sure if something fell from that, but they have stopped play. And this will be a timeout. 68-54, 3.34 remaining in this second half. And a reminder to join us again Monday night. We'll be here for the 2023 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. San Diego State is waiting on either Miami or UConn. Jim Jackson, Clark Kellogg, and I will have all the action with contributions throughout the night. For Mandy Katz, Bill Walt, P.J. Carlosimo, Jason Horowitz, and Doug Gottlieb will tip it off at 6.30 p.m. Eastern with a pregame show on most of these same Westwood One stations. You can also listen via the free Varsity Network app on Alexa-enabled devices or online at Westwood One Sports. Dot com. And the Aztecs of San Diego State 
better have their defense ready if UConn comes rolling in on the run that they're on having beaten Iona 87-63, St. Mary's 70-55, Arkansas 88-65, Gonzaga 82-54, and now up by 14 over Miami. They've been the most dominant team in the tournament. The numbers say it, and just watching them, you see why depth, size, ball movement, solid defense, all the ingredients. Inbound to pack for Miami. The top scoring offense in the ACC held the 54 so far. Miller at the top of the key. He'll drive down the left side of the lane. Gets into traffic. Has to back this one out and throws it towards the backcourt. Saved by Pack, but right into the hands of Jackson. Jackson on the left wing will send it over to Aline. And that beautiful team defense. That's great help by Sonogo to take away that drive and force that turnover. And that's what they've done at both ends, Jim. Collectively. Collectively. Everybody doing what they do. Understanding their role, sharing the ball, playing through Sonogo. Here's Newton, four to shoot. Caravan to Sonogo, one to shoot for three for Sonogo. It won't go. The rebound long for Miami. Passes it ahead to Bensley Joseph. Joseph on the run, all the way to the rim. Sonogo with a block. Follow won't go for Miller. Rebound swatted into the hands of Andre Jackson Jr. of UConn. Smart play, but back to the Park's point. Jordan Hawkins and Sonogo are the key contributors on offense, but they're not high volume shooters. The ball rotates around. Multiple people have a chance to score and beat you. That's what makes it extremely difficult to take everything away from this UConn te team offensively. Yep. Six, six different players with six or more as Aline tries the three. It won't go. Rebound Karam's right to Sonogo for an easy two. He's got 21, and the Huskies can sense it now. Up 70 to 54 with two to play. Joseph now from left to right. Here's Miller. Urgency in the eyes of the Hurricanes now as Wong at the top of the key. Step back three. No, but a foul is called on Andre Jackson Jr. And Wong will get three free throws, stopping the clock with 150 to play. Well, this has been a very impressive workmanlike effort by the Huskies. Nothing flashy. No. Just staying with who we are. Control this one wire to wire. And unless Miami has some, well, this one's, this one's about history. I mean, minus 15 with a minute 50 to go. There are steep hills, and then there's the climb that Miami would have to make to get this one done. <laughs> Wong hits both of the first two free throws. The NCAA Experience official VIP hospitality is now available for the 2024 Men's Final Four in Phoenix. Official NCAA hospitality includes live entertainment, upscale food stations and beverages, appearances by NCAA legends, and much more. To be a VIP at the 2024 NCAA Men's Final Four in Phoenix, visit NCAA.com slash VIP. Three free throws good, 13-point lead. Pressure comes, they break the press, lob it ahead, and an easy lay-in for Naheem Ali, 72-57. Newton's had a heck of a game tonight. Pack a quick three of the right side offensive zone for Miami, rebounded by Sonogo, and now some smiles starting to creep onto the faces of the Huskies. 125 to go. Dan Early says, let's slow this up a little bit now with 120 to play. 72-57. UConn closing in on the title game. They've been there four times prior in school history. They've won a national title each of those four times as Sonogo is fouled and got poked in the eye as he put up the jumper on the left baseline. And Sonogo's going to go to the free throw line for two. The shot no good. There's so much value in going through some adversity through the course of the year. This team started off so well, number two in the country. But then in conference, the schedule kind of caught up with them a little bit. They had to regroup, regather, figure out who they were, got back to playing. And it happened, I think, Clark, at the right time because it allowed them to kind of change the course and yeah. learn yeah. and get ready to play. And since then, they haven't looked back. That's really a great point, Jim. I've talked to countless coaches over the years, and just about all of them in the will tell you that some form of adversity during the course of the season can steal the will of a championship type team. And so those times of friction and adversity and struggle, if you work through them, 
oh, yeah. the right way, and you have the ingredients, then you can find yourself playing for a championship. And this team will do so on Monday night and will be the favorite. The favorite. Yeah. Jim Laranega just pulling North Shadow Mirror, Isaiah Wong and Nigel Pack or Jordan Miller off the floor. Big hug for all three of those players who are in tears, as you might imagine, on the sideline. They're going to go down in history. The first team to ever bring Miami to the Final Four. Those tears will dry, and at some point they'll look back on this and remember it fondly for what an amazing run it was. And it'll be a great source of pride for them, the Miami Hurricanes family, and it won't ever go away. It's a lifetime memory. Packle working up the floor, 72-57, UConn by 15. Up top it goes, Christian Watson. His three won't go. Offensive rebound underneath, Ja'Kai Robinson, and a foul is going to be called. The foul going on Andrew Hurley, familiar name in the Final Four. Andrew Hurley getting his first taste of Final Four action for UConn. So all the Hurleys getting some love tonight. Dan Hurley, Bob Hurley in the stands, all smiles. Free throw good for Robinson. A reminder to stay with us for the final four postgame report. We'll check the final stats. You'll hear reaction from both teams, plus Bill Walton, P.J. Carlissimo, and Doug Gottlieb with their thoughts on tonight's outcomes. That's coming up after the game. And how cool was it that Danny Hurley was giving some instructions to his son, Andrew Hurley, number 20. Just a little bit, give him a little action on the floor in the final four they head to the championship got to be a great feeling too it's hurley with a basketball just across half court his dad over his right shoulder shouting instructions hurley with 12 on the shot clock harassed out there by robinson of miami bumping and that's a five second count so, you know, Andrew Hurley is going to be a little frustrated. He came in the game and got a turnover. <laughs> got a turnover like that. Come on, Dad. Yeah. Can't, Hurley. can't let me move. <laughs> Miami will bring it across now. Watson to work. No foul. The three on Ooh. the right side will not go. Rebound tipped around and controlled by Richie Springs of UConn. And the Huskies are going to bring it up. They're going to dribble it out. And the UConn Huskies will close it out. And for the fifth time in school history, the UConn Huskies will play for a national championship at the Final Four. They go wire to wire, knocking off the Miami Hurricanes 72 to 59. And our national title tilt is set. It's UConn and San Diego State Monday night in Houston. As impressive a performance as we've seen all tournament long, Miami's an excellent scoring team, and UConn Clark Kellogg took them completely out of their game from the tip tonight. Exactly. Wire-to-wire -wire domination in a methodical fashion. This is your favorite to win it all. Coming into the tournament after two or three games, it started to look that way, and they've done nothing but continue to build on domination. Now they'll have a chance for the coronation against a game and very resilient San Diego State team, but this Huskies team is going to be really hard to deal with. UConn's smallest victory of the tournament tonight, 15. Their average margin of victory, 20.6. So you teased it. UConn and San Diego State Monday night. Clark, before you head back to television, quick thought on what we might see on Monday. Well, it's going to take a Herculean effort from the Aztecs. They're going to have to play the best game they've ever played because UConn just has too many answers when you talk about what it is you're going to try to take away. Clark, enjoy the TV set. Can't wait to see you Monday night. Yep, looking forward to it, guys. Once again, let's rejoin Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Kevin. Jordan. You weren't feeling well, and yet you made it onto this court, had major contributions. How did you pull it off? Heart of a lion. I got a heart of a lion, and I love my teammates to death. I, I couldn't sit this one. I was the final four, man. I don't care how I was feeling. So I, I had to play, had to be there for my guys, and I'm just so happy. We got one more game left, though. So At the beginning of the game, I know you weren't feeling well. You hit that first shot. What did that tell you? Man. 
I still got it. I still got my jump shot. That ain't leave, but my condition, my condition was a little off. But hey, all glory to God, all glory to my teammates. I come out here and play in front of thousands of people. It's a truly amazing feeling. So yeah. How do you explain the way you guys have played in the second halves in this tournament in such dominating fashion? Man, we don't stop. Uh, we keep putting that foot on their neck. Um, we got a really tough team, really, really tough team. And I think we can out tough anybody. Uh, our defense is top t top tier. We just play two halves together. The only team, five teams only play one. So, yeah. Rest up, Jordan. You're 40 minutes away from a national championship. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Kevin. All right, Andy. Thanks so much. Kevin Kugler, Jim Jackson, and joined now courtside by P.J. Carlissimo, who had the chance to watch both of these exciting games tonight as clark left he said it's going to take a herculean effort for san diego state to win a national title the way uconn is playing i assume you would not disagree with that assertion no i wouldn't disagree but again uh, to see the way miami came back and you know put themselves in a couple times they looked like they were one more bucket away from it getting a little bit shaky uh, no question connecticut has played better than anyone in the tournament so far but after what san diego state did in that last 13 minutes, uh, I'm not going to say no way. <laughs> I, you know, and I agree with you at this, the, the challenge that San Diego State is going to have, do they have enough firepower across the board to deal with the complexity defensively that UConn can bring, but also their diverse offensive repertoire with a number of guys that can score. This UConn team, to me, is tough because they're long, they're athletic, they play with discipline, but they play within the system. It's not like one guy is going out there to try to get you know, 30 points. All you got to look at is the assists. They have so many yeah. assists on their field goals. And I'm watching in the first game, I was surprised how few there were, but incredible there. Well, we are joined courtside by the head coach of the Yukon Huskies, Dan Hurley. Dan, congratulations on your way to the national title game. Your kids from the very jump tonight really seem to take Miami out of what they wanted to do from start to finish in this one. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, picking our spots with, with, with taking things away and then getting into gaps and then just making things really, really hard, you know, on Wong and Pack, uh, you know, and, and containing Miller the way we did, who's, uh, you know, one of the best offensive mismatch players in the country. But just thought we set a tone. Defensively, obviously making those early threes. You know, having a Dama make two threes to start the game was my game plan. <laughs> not, not Luke Murray, not Kamani Young. That was mine. Hey, Danny, listen, a lot of people may have been watching UConn for the first time through the tournament. We've had the players that are watching all year. You went through a tough time. Started off high, went through a tough time, that adversity, but you bounced back. How did that solidify your team to get you where you're at right now? Yeah, I just think... You know, the, it was a joy ride through the non-conference or November, December, joy ride, January, tons of adversity. Uh, and then again, when you're at UConn, it's like, uh, you know, it's pandemonium, man. Social media explodes. Uh, you just, you feel it. And uh, it just, Andre Jackson's leadership um, and Adama Sano goes le leading by example. But just the way Andre Jackson leads the team, man, he's just, mm -hmm. he's a special guy and he kept the team together. I thought it was really going to be tough for you when Andre got the two quick fouls and Jordan Hawkins clearly didn't look like no. 100%. So I'm very concerned, and yet your defense just didn't allow it to be close through the first half. Yeah, I mean, Mahima Lean is like an underrated defender. He's physical, and, and uh, he could guard multiple positions. And then, obviously, I thought Klingon had a big impact in the first half yeah. just with his size, even on things he didn't block. Uh, and, and really, at that point, when Andre got the two, yeah, you know, we just I was so nervous that Caravan would pick up a second because that would really put us in a bad spot. You had a couple of big ATO plays in the first half were huge, but it seemed every time you needed a bucket, you guys were able to find Sonogo. Yeah, uh, you know, and it's tough because Omir is one of the best pre-catch low post defenders. I mean, a guy is, is so strong, but Adamo was able to find angles. Our passers were able to, you know, find angles and uh you know, the, the, uh, obviously, uh, I was just so impressed with the job we did on him on the glass, too. Dan, congratulations. We'll see you Monday night. See you Monday night. Later. Dan Hurley, head coach of UConn. A few extra words for Coach Carlissimo right now as they head out to the locker room and head to the media. Of the official press conference coming up mm -hmm. for Coach Hurley and a 72-59 win for his team. Wire to wire tonight to take care of 
of a very good Miami Hurricane team. Jim Jackson, there's a lot of choices in this one because this is a balanced UConn team. You made the choice in the first game. That was not easy. I don't know how difficult this one will be, but it's time to select the player of the game, the one who delivered for the team, sponsored by the United States Postal Service, reinventing to deliver more value, convenience, and confidence. Fast, reliable, perfectly orchestrated, the United States Postal Service. Adama Sanogo, he started the game off with the three-pointers, but I thought he had an effect on the game defensively, whether he blocked a shot, he dissuaded uh, you know, players from coming in to getting layup, rim protect, all the little things set screens. 13 points doesn't say a lot, but his impact on the game to me, which was more important in the long term, as to why UConn is playing for a national championship on Monday. Well, UConn gets it done 72 59. It'll be UConn and San Diego State coming up on Monday night here at NRG Stadium in Houston. Hurricanes tonight held to just 25% shooting in the first half, and they played them even in the second half, but when you fall behind in that big hole, it really becomes difficult to overcome, and it certainly was tonight for the Miami Hurricanes, whose season ends with their first Final Four appearance and a 29-8 and record. When we return, we'll have more of the post-game report. You're listening to the Men's Final Four on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Imagine buying a pair of sneakers and getting a soothing, gentle foot massage like you'd get during a relaxing pedicure just by walking. You might think this sounds too good to be true, but we think it sounds like Skechers' new Massage Fit Sneakers. Because Skechers, the comfort technology company, has designed a unique innovation that makes it feel like you're pampering your feet with a gentle massage in every step. The secret is Skechers' new patented wave technology on the sole that gently massages your feet while you're walking around. It feels amazing and is so gentle you can wear them all day just like your other favorite Skechers sneakers. And not only will you be getting the massage, you'll also be getting Skechers' other famous comfort features, like a special luxury insole that offers extra support for 24-7 comfort. Plus, they come in a variety of fashionable styles, including lace-up and slip-ons, and they're machine washable for easy care. Get a bonus massage in every step with Skechers' new massage fit. Find them for men and women at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. All right, people, let's get this meeting started. Where are the chairs? Gone. Research shows standing meetings are quicker. What uh, research is that? Topic one. CDW helped us deploy Mac Supercharged by Apple Silicon for the way we work now. So how's their speed? Fast. Battery life? Long. Cyber threat protection? Strong. Ownership costs? Low. Great. This meeting adjourned. Is- wow, that was fast. Yep, that's the research. With Mac configured by CDW, a solution that works for everyone isn't just possible, it's powerful. Find out more at cdw.com slash get Mac. There's something for everyone with the Disney bundle, Disney plus Hulu and ESPN plus ready for an adventure. Like the new season of the Mandalorian on Disney plus This is the way. tiny, beautiful things on Hulu. It's doing the impossible every day. And the PGA tour on ESPN plus. How about that? Starting at just $9.99 a month. All of these and more streaming this spring. ESPN plus plans starting at $12.99 a month. 18 plus only access content from each service separately. Offer valid for eligible subscribers only. Terms apply. All right, class, it's the NCAA Men's Frozen Four. Welcome to Fandom 101. Want to help your team rule the rink? Here's your assignment. Lesson one, go big for every goal. Two, when you bring it, bring it up for the whole class. And three, attendance is encouraged, but passion is mandatory. The NCAA Men's Frozen Four, April 6th and 8th at Emily Arena in Tampa, Florida. Buy your tickets today at NCAA.com slash MFrozen4. Class dismissed. Monster.com helps you slam dunk the job search and make your next career move. With great coaching and millions of job openings, Monster.com empowers you to score your next position and win the job hunt. Get off the bench and go to Monster.com today. There are over 10,000 reasons why steel is not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Find tools for the job site or your own backyard at over 10,000 authorized local steel dealers. Find yours at SteelUSA.com. Lowe's and Home Depot are trademarks with their respective companies. Final score, UConn 72, Miami 59. It's UConn and San Diego State on Monday night in the national championship game. Let's check the final stats sponsored by Scott's. If your yard needs some life, then you need Scott's Turf Builder. You just put it down once now and again this summer to thicken your lawn and get it growing strong. Feed your lawn. Feed it. 72-59, 72 59, <laughs> 21 points, 10 rebounds for Adama Sonogo to lead the way. The double double 
for Sonoga. It's hard to believe it's just his ninth double-double of the year. Yeah. feels like he should have one every single night in this one, but he has his ninth of the year, 13 points for Jordan Hawkins, eight points for Naheem Aline, who played a really good 21 minutes off the bench tonight, eight points and nine rebounds for Alex Caravan. The season ends for Miami, 15 points for Isaiah Wong, 11 points, 10 rebounds for Jordan Miller, Norchad O'Meara, 8 points, 7 rebounds, 8 points for Pack. Really struggled tonight, 3 of 10 from the floor, as did Wooga Poplar, held scoreless, 0 for 7 from the floor, 0 for 4 from 3 tonight for Wooga Poplar. The season ends for Miami with a 72-59 loss to the Yukon Huskies. And guys, this was a... We, we talked about it at one point, Jim, in the broadcast, kind of a workmanlike performance for UConn, which is hard to say when it's a 72-59 game, but it kind of was a workmanlike. They are just good enough that they held Miami at bay from the first half on. Because it's not spectacular. What they do is they beat you by the little things. Offensive rebounds, they pass the ball extremely well. Defensively, they're going to lock up. You know, they'll get out in transition. They'll have a highlight play like Andre Jackson, the backdoor lob or the fast break, but if you watch this team play all year, it's about doing their business. They're going to grind you out, force you to take some tough twos, shoot over height, okay, and play multiple players to wear you down. And it's as simple as that. It sounds like it, but this team has been doing it all year. Hence, you know, they're playing in the championship game. So I think their defense is underrated. They, they play so well there we go couldn't hear you pj my bad uh, <laughs> <laughs> they play so well on the defensive end like you watch them and like as you said you see the passing you see the rebounding which they're as good as anybody in the country and you kind of take it for granted then you look at the stats they're first in points allowed mm -hmm. in the big east first in field goal percentage defense first in three-point defense this is an excellent excellent offensive team miami has they just took them out of everything through the entire first half. All right, we have two games today. We have a winner, 72-71 San Diego State. We have this game, 72-59. UConn gets the victory over Miami. We have our coach with us in P.J. Carlissimo, who's one job tonight. <laughs> that's, is, it. that's it. That's it. He's got nothing else to do except order a good glass of wine <laughs> later on. I've got that covered. <laughs> it's time to select the O'Reilly Auto Parts coaching move of the day. What do you see, PJ? It's it's a double move, but I'm going to give it to Brian Dutcher. I mean, they trail by 14 with less than 15 minutes mm -hmm. to go. At halftime, it was 13-7 bench points, and FAU – is one of the best in the country, bench points. In the second half, it was 20-2 to two in favor of San Diego State because he recognized Micah Parrish, Jaden Ledee, and A.G. Arope were going good. He stretched their minutes out. They all gave him big production. They led the way in the second half. His bench, after they were badly outplayed in the first half, and then the obvious one, which he told them in the timeout, we get the miss. We're going. We're not taking a timeout. He let him go. It was the correct play. But not just the one. The combination of the two, I thought, put his team in a great chance to win. And then Mr. Butler delivered. That's the coaching move of the day, sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all your car care needs. Get the parts and service you need fast from the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Final thoughts, Jim, on what was a – Another tremendous Final Four. Our first game was one to remember for a long time, and then UConn did what they've been doing, just beat another team by double figures. It, it never ceases to amaze me the dynamics of what happens throughout the course of the game, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. But then it's about teams locking in, doing the little things, the coaching adjustments. I thought UConn was a superior team, and they played like it the whole time. The game before was a catch game. Who could you know, finalizing these stretches where it minimized loose opportunities. San Diego State never gave up. They figured out ways to get to the free throw line and isolate and use their bench. And as a result, their size finally mattered in the course of the game. It kind of wore down FAU. 39 minutes and 58 seconds to get, to mm. get there, but they got there eventually. Uh, just the obvious, we've, we've got a fantastic final. But those two teams, FAU the year they had mm -hmm. and Miami the year they had, it, it's such a jolt to just have your season end when you're that close to playing for the national championship. So hats off to both of those programs for the years they had. Before we say goodbye from down here, PJ, one thing you expect to see on Monday night in this matchup. I expect to see an absolute war in the paint and on the glass. Uh, these two teams are so physical 
and yet at the same time they move their feet so well. The defense is going to be incredible uh, with, with the two teams we've got going at each other. No, I'm just happy that I can say my partner Jim Jackson's in one piece after I saved him from near death with Bensley Joseph coming crashing <laughs> off the floor. At least that's how I'm going to tell it to my family. All relative. Yeah. All relative in the thoughts process. It's a good thing it wasn't on me, and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's nowhere near that boy, and I'm on the parking lot. <laughs> okay. Well, terrific night tonight. 72-59, UConn wins this one. San Diego State got the win 72-71 in the first one right now. Let's rejoin Jason Horowitz of the Westwood One broadcast booth. All right, Kev, thank you very much. From up here, it looked like Clark saved you both, but maybe we're wrong a little bit farther away from the floor than you guys. All right, 72-59 for Miami, 72-71 San Diego State. Highlights, analysis, it's all coming up. As we continue here on the postgame show, you're listening to the Men's Final Four on the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. Lowe's knows how to get your lawn ready for spring. And right now, you can take up to $10 off select Scott's fertilizers. Plus, you can save $50 on a Craftsman 20-volt 13-inch string trimmer and leaf blower combo kit. Now just $99. Get set for spring. Visit us in-store or online today. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 323 through 45. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, excludes Alaska and Hawaii. All right, class, it's the NCAA Men's Frozen Four. Welcome to Fandom 101. Want to help your team rule the rink? Here's your assignment. Lesson one, go big for every goal. Two, when you bring it, bring it up for the whole class. And three, attendance is encouraged, but passion is mandatory. The NCAA Men's Frozen Four, April 6th and 8th at Emily Arena in Tampa, Florida. Buy your tickets today at NCAA.com slash MFrozen4. Class dismissed. Spring is almost here, and you can make mealtime easy with HelloFresh. Not only does HelloFresh deliver great-tasting recipes to your door, new dietitian win options under 700 calories, and protein smart choices featuring 30 grams or more of protein make it easier than ever to stay on top of your wellness goals. Join in and sign up today for 60% off plus free shipping with code SCORE60 at HelloFresh.com slash SCORE60. That's code SCORE60 at HelloFresh.com slash SCORE60. Whether you own a local business or a global one, you're always looking for ways to position your operation to create opportunities and move on them faster. With Bank of America, you get access to experts, award-winning insights, and business solutions so powerful, you'll make every move matter, locally and globally. Visit BankofAmerica.com slash Banking for Business to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2023, Bank of America, N.A. Hey, basketball fans, this is Kevin Kugler with an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about. Upside, basketball fans are earning cash back for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use my limited promo code HOOPS, that's H-O-O-P-S, for 25 cents per gallon or more on your first fill up cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Upside. Frequent users are earning $340 a year. Just download the app for free and use my promo code HOOPS for $0.25 cents per gallon or more on your first tank. That's right. Start getting real cash back every time you fill up and get an additional $0.25 cents per gallon when you get started right now. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use my promo code HOOPS to get $0.25 cents per gallon or more cash back on your first tank. Just use promo code HOOPS. Now, that's code HOOPS. All right, Jason Horwitz, Doug Gottlieb back with you here in our broadcast booth high atop Energy Stadium as the crowd is all filtered out. They're all getting set for Monday night in the championship game between San Diego State and UConn. The Aztecs highlights coming up in a little bit. Their comeback win and the buzzer beater to knock off FAU. Different story, though, in game number two, Doug, because UConn did tonight to Miami what they've done to everybody this entire tournament. Yeah, I, I would say the difference, though, is that in this tournament, there have been times when it's been a struggle in the first half, and that team was ready to play. And it's one of the things that, you know, coaches talk about the magic level, you know, getting your team ready for the magic level, not too high to where they're throwing the ball all over the place and shooting the ball off the backboard, but definitely not too low where they get punched in the mouth. UConn was ready, ready from the jump, 
And I thought they they really took a lot of the energy away from Miami by being ready and by putting them on the defensive. It takes so much to get back into a game when you're when you're when you're down double digits so quickly. Yeah, let's do our score and recap of game number two, sponsored by CDW for cloud mobility, security, and data center solutions. Turn to CDW, CDW people who get it. It was a ball game where Adama Sanogo yep. in his first two years at UConn never hit a three. He hit 17 this year. He hit two in the first five minutes. They were up nine, nothing. They had a double digit lead. Miami though did have a spurt here in the first half of the opening half. Nigel Pat, slow jog across the court from right to left. O'Meara will pop out to get it. And now Harlan Beverly. Nigel Pack around the O'Meara screen. Dribbles to the right side for the three. Rattles it hard. Nigel Pack with a three. And Miami has tied it up at 19. But never took the lead, and UConn answered back. Aline will back this one out to Caravan. Frenetic pace here, but not much to show for it. Not exactly. at all. Miami struggling to get the ball in the basket. Calcaterra, a three on the left wing for Joey, California. And a 32-21 lead, UConn's largest of the night. Calcaterra, the transfer from San Diego, not university, not San Diego State, but University of, hit that three, one of six for the Huskies in the first half. Caravan would hit one at the buzzer. They'd be up by 13 at the break, 37-24. And like Arkansas, like Gonzaga, first three minutes of the second half, you had a massive push and a Wrangler highlight of the game. Newton pivoting around, now puts the ball on the floor. One dribbler is right, gets it back on a handoff from Jackson. He'll curl around, drives right side of the lane to the rim. Shot won't go. Sonogo with a rebound. Up top, Caravan open three. Got it. Sonogo with the O rebound. Caravan with a deep three. 44 26, UConn. And now Pack and Miami in some real trouble. Yeah, one of the four offensive rebounds for Adama Sonogo, and that's the highlight of the game, sponsored by Wrangler. It's Wrangler season out there. Open roads, endless horizons. Shop Wrangler.com for new denim styles. Made for your next adventure, Wrangler for the ride of life. So an 18-point lead that they would make 20. And as if the way that this tournament is going, ball game. Other teams never got back. Tonight we had a little bit of a different story. 15 to shoot Jackson curls kicks it out caravan driving left baseline to the rim shot hangs on the rim won't go tip try by Klingon won't go and it's tipped out to Beverly Beverly now sticking and sagging up the floor backs it up to Wong fires a three top of the key Get it. here come the Hurricanes 53 45 UConn's lead is down to eight but on the very next possession UConn got another one of those offensive rebounds we were talking about all night long. Donovan Klingon put it back in to put him back up by 10. Went to a timeout. It was a 13-point game, and UConn finished it off. They break a little pressure. Jackson to the other end of the floor, and an angry two-hand hammer. Oh, my goodness. Cock and fire. And Jackson flushes it home. UConn up 62-47. Game was never single digits the rest of the way. They win by 13, 72, 59. Hurricanes, no field goals in the final 6 13 of the game. Shot 25% in the first half, 32% from the game. And the Huskies win it 72 59 to move in 10 and 1 all time in games played in the final four. That combines championships as well as the semifinals as we now bring in our friend Bill Walton back courtside. Bill, you said it at the half. They're just so talented. They're just so good. And they pushed it to a 20-point lead so quickly. And then all of a sudden, it was just about hanging on, and they did that and more. Jason, Doug, when you're the best, and UConn has shown that they are better than all the other teams up to this point, when you're the best, you basically announce how you're going to win and what you're going to do. And what UConn announces is that, hey, we're going to give the ball to Sonogo down low. We're going to space the floor with Alex Caravan. We're going to have Andre Jackson race around and do everything. I wish he would shoot more, though, because ultimately that's going to come back to haunt him. A really good opponent will play him for those passes, and if he's not looking to attack, then that's going to cause the Huskies some real problems. Jordan Hawkins spaces up beautifully, magnificent stroke, but the way that Tristan Newton came out and played very, very well. Naheem Aleem got a chance because of the early foul trouble to Andre Jackson. And Joey Calcaterra is always ready to go. 
So with their style, which got them the early lead, and then it just looked like they were listening to too much music that said, when life looks like Easy Street, there's danger at your door. And they just kind of goofed around a little bit. Miami got hot there. There was a point when Wong even started smiling and taunting UConn. Not a good idea, particularly when your offense has only got 45 points with eight and a half minutes to go. I think the Hurricanes needed Rick Barry here tonight. But uh, <laughs> Rick is 78 years old. He's playing pickleball these days. And we're sad that he wasn't here tonight but this game for UConn was just a classic example of how you dominate in every single way UConn like Florida Atlantic in the first game which was the better team throughout but UConn and Florida Atlantic they don't have defensive gimmicks they just say okay you guard that guy I'll guard this guy you get the rebound I'll run up the court and we'll pound it inside. We'll get the ball to our best players and we're going to win the game basically by accumulating superior advantages on every single possession. The 14 point collapse by Florida Atlantic in the first half, in the first game, excuse me, I've been there in this game, in the semifinal game, 14 points ahead with just under four minutes to go and lost the game. You never forget that. You can talk all you want about, oh, we were happy to be here. We made the final four. Nonsense. I never heard a champion talk like that. Give credit to the other team, though. San Diego State came back and did a really, really good job. You know what you said there, Bill? Doug and I have talked about that a lot throughout the course of this tournament. We talked about it early in the first round with Kennesaw State. They had Xavier on the ropes and probably should have won that game. And, Doug, you and I were saying back in studio that there's no way they feel great about their just being there. They they should have won that game. Yeah, I mean, listen, Florida Atlantic's not going home home going like hey guys good we job al- good job we almost had him <laughs> yeah they're sitting there going like we should have had it we had the game yeah we had, we had the game we had the ball we had a layup we should have we should have won the game I, you I guys think- weren't born when i did that we were t- we, it was march 23rd 1974 not that i remember the date anyway the last two champions guys the, the last two champions kansas and baylor they had the easier game on the semifinal night and that was UConn here tonight San Diego State they put everything they had into getting this victory tonight now they're high as can be and everybody's telling them yeah this is fantastic UConn comes in just steady in total control for the vast majority of the game and so they're already going to be thinking about Monday night now, the Aztecs, you have to come down before you come back up. The Aztecs are going to have to play a lot better than they played against Florida Atlantic tonight. They're not going to be able to count on UConn falling apart. They're not going to be able to count on UConn not being able to control the backboards and the paint in there because Sonogo is really, really good. His footwork, his skill level, and the fact that they can bring Donovan Klingon into the ball game, this guy is so good and impacts every aspect of the game and, and the mental approach that Alex Caravan, who's got a very nice physical package as well, reminds me a lot of Dave Myers uh, from UCLA years ago, <laughs> a guy who was so good he was traded for Kareem. Now, there were, granted, there was five or six other guys right, thrown right, in there, but right. Donovan Klingon, Every single time down the court at both ends, he makes a positive impact. And so if he can continue to do that, but San Diego State is big. They're tough. They're rugged. Mensa is going to have to play a lot better. He's going to have to play a lot more minutes than he's been used to playing. Jaden Ledee is not going to be able to get away with just throwing the ball up there and thinking they're going to be able to get offensive rebounds back again. A rope, a very good player, is going to, he's going to have to come out and play a solid, solid game in both ends of the court. Keyshawn Johnson cannot get in early and silly and careless foul trouble. And then the perimeter guys, the Matt Bradleys and the Micah Parrish, they have to play better. Lamont Butler saved the Aztecs tonight. Darian Tr- Trammell did not have the great impact that he's more than capable of carrying this team. Adam Seiko, a non-factor here. The thing about UConn, everybody played well for them. Everybody. And so that's the way championships are won. And so if the Aztecs can come out and get positive contribution from every single one of their guys, they can have a real chance to win that game. But UConn, they are not going to give it away. 
They are not going to beat themselves. Yeah. They are a fantastic team, and I've had the time of my life here tonight. Yeah, and they will be the heavy favorite on Monday night, too, as well. Bill, enjoy tomorrow. Well, you enjoy hold every on, day. Hold but, on, hold what on. What do you mean, hold on? They're Rick, setting the lights off on you, soon. Rick Barry's on the line. Please, Rick Barry. He, he wants in. <laughs> he wants an overtime here. Rick Barry could probably still score 25 points a game. Thank you, he Bill. Could. We'll talk to you Monday night. Jason, Bye. here we go. Doug, fantastic job as always. Here we go. As you go. say, we've got a game. We've got, we've a, got game. a game. Yeah, the pressure uh, is on. The countdown. <laughs> Ten, nine. Who can play? I'm ready, please. Let's we'll go. find out on Monday. All right, we bring it back to the second game. UConn ran away from uh, Miami. Jim Laranega's team uh, failed to get to 60. 72-59. Their offense struggled after the game with Andy Katz. Well, Jim, obviously we talked at halftime, and you were hoping that things would turn in your favor. What couldn't get flipped in the second half? Yeah. I think our guys were so anxious and, and wanting to do so well. They were going to play really hard, but you could get to play smart. And our offense really negated our defense because we were taking so many bad shots off the bounce early in the uh, shot clock. And, you know, sometimes we can make those, but tonight, Connecticut's defense, they deserve a lot of credit. They guarded us very well. And when you miss those, you give them a chance to score before your defense is back. And that's what happened. They were able to get a commanding lead. You know, it was 9-0, and then it got up to be like 19-16. And then we went back to doing the same thing. We, 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 uh, and even at halftime, one of our players put on the board, share the ball. It's a message we, we give our players every day. And then we go out in the second half and do the exact same thing. So I think just the idea of making it to the Final Four was a great accomplishment. Uh, losing tonight hurts. I told them about a show I used to watch called The Wide World of Sports. And the message was, you know, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And I said, we've experienced both. Last weekend, the thrill of victory, and tonight, the agony of defeat. I would say just not just this season, but last season. How do you put in perspective what this group, this core group, has done over the last two years? You know, um, when we first got to Miami, my coaching staff did a great job of putting the, the pieces together. We won in 2013 our first ACC championship. And a worst so they're adding one of the best albeit an aged one but still one of the best of course it makes the jets a better team The tournament championship moved to the Sweet 16. I forget how many times we've been to the Sweet 16, but like four in the last 10 years. And um, we've moved now to the Elite Eight. We moved to the Final Four. 
hopefully someday soon we'll win our first championship. Appreciate Jim, all your help. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Well, the to total, he's right, four since 2013, and Miami basketball, before Jim Laranega got there in 2011, had only ever been to one Sweet 16, and that was in 2000. Uh, wrap up the season for Miami, Doug. Your thoughts on the ACC co-regular season champs? Uh, well, the first thing is, uh, obviously, the big discussion in the basketball world is the use of NIL, sure. which was intended to be name, image, and likeness. You achieve something great, like what these players have achieved on the court, and then if somebody wants you to represent their company, great. Uh, this is a big step. The problem with it is, in many ways, what's viewed as what Miami's doing, which is, hey, we're going to pay for you through a collective to come play for us. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, you'll represent our com our company. So this Miami team, it's not the team itself. It's the way in which it was done in many ways by by a, by a noted booster who owns a major company while, while he's doing it. That shouldn't take away from how the team actually played. Right. right? Like they, they and it is a challenge when you bring in guys, you know, Nigel Pack scores. 17 a game at Kansas State. Can you get him to share the ball? That's the challenge of coaching when you're adding pieces to an already quality core group. Um, you win the ACC, that's a great season. You get to the Final Four, that's a great season. You do it at Miami, a place that's not a traditional power, it's an incredible season. And you do it after falling short, after having a big lead at halftime against Kansas, the eventual national champion last year. It makes it even sweeter because so many teams go on a run and then they go away to build on that is magnificent stuff. And it only adds yeah. to doesn't take away from the legacy of Jim Laranega, but yeah, they, they came up short. They were not the better team. And I didn't think they played their best game. And there were times as coach L said in the first, in the second half where they regressed to kind of a pickup ball thing. And that's, that's the, that's the downside to how he coaches, which is he really lets his guys play. And sometimes they, they fall on their own devices. Sometimes it becomes a negative. And I thought that was at times what happened tonight. And some of it was you guys are really, really good. Really damn yeah, good. They're really good. And they're on a mission. And they have not lost a game to a non-conference opponent this year. And they've beaten them all by double figures, all 16 of them. Tonight at 72-59. Game one, much closer. Highlights on the other side from the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network. This is the Men's Final Four. Hey guys, the Center for Men's Health, you know us as C4MH.com, has become the leader in testosterone replacement therapy because we keep it safe, convenient, and affordable. We are the leaders because we realize that going to a doctor's office really and truly sucks. C4MH.com has thrown that pompous doctor's office nonsense out the door. No sick people in the waiting room, no rude staff that treats you like a number, and once you become a client, there's no treatment appointments. If we're open, just walk in to any of our 18 locations from Tampa to Naples. C4MH physicians will sit and talk with you, even call you. Our staff is well-trained and friendly, and we will not keep you waiting. C4MH.com became the leader because testosterone replacement therapy is all we do. Come see C4MH when you want to feel the best you can be. See the others for their waiting room reading material. Got the Diacos? My name is synonymous with breast surgery. If you want better breasts, let me, Dr. Dan Diaco, help. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon with over 20 years of experience and performed over 5,000 breast procedures. If you want perkier breasts, whether bigger or smaller, let me help. Are you tired of looser, sagging skin in your face, neck, breasts, or tummy? Let me, Dr. Dan Diaco, a board-certified plastic surgeon with 20 years of experience, help you. I use the latest technology such as face tight and body tight to both tighten skin and remove fat without scars. Yeah, buying some pretzel sticks? Excuse me? This is your wake-up call from Track Phone Wireless. Okay. What if you didn't eat all those pretzel sticks by the end of the month, so this store took them back? Uh, good luck. That's how some wireless companies are with your data, but Track Phone Wireless gives you unlimited carryover data with active service, so you keep what you pay for. Hmm. Plans start at $20 a month. Wow, that's cool. Uh, sir, are you bothering the customers? Yeah, hang on. This is your wake-up call, people. Track Phone Wireless, now you're in control. Available at major retailers. See terms and conditions at trackphone.com. Why should saving for retirement be any different? I mean, they go back to college, learn new instruments, start skateboarding, 
Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. With aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a three-minute chat with Avo, the friendly digital retirement coach from AARP. You'll get personalized recommendations based on your input that are easy to understand and work with your lifestyle. It's quick, easy, and free. Plus, it's sponsored by AARP, so you know they got your back. Snarly move, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org. A message from AARP and the Ad Council. Back with you inside an almost empty NRG stadium, getting set. For what will be a San Diego State UConn National Championship game on Monday. How the Aztecs got there in a sec, but let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Westwood One NCAA Radio Network, your home for the national championships. 820 WWPA Largo. Radio State. He was born Jody Anthony Aloysius McDonald Jr., but he would prefer it if you'd call him Jody Mac. Hey, you could call me like Ralph, I guess, but I don't know that I would answer. He's an optimist. Every single day that I get up, I look on the bright side of life, but I do sprinkle in some realism from time to time. And he can't believe he gets paid to do this. I, this is just incomprehensible to me. This is the Jody Mac Show. We'll make many points. We got four hours. We better get a couple of points in. Here's Jody Mack. Jay Mack here with you on CBS Sports Radio. Two hours in the books, two left to play. I'll stick around and continue to get your calls in at 855-212-4227. Hope to hear from uh, Kurt Heelan from NBC Sports, their lead NBA writer, coming up in just a couple of minutes. But before we talk to Kurt, uh, I'm, I'm watching ESPN. Game's over and done with. Uh, you've got your two teams that have made it to the NCAA championship game. UConn wins handily. San Diego State on a buzzer beater. Two great games. The first game, sorry, being the better of the two. Sorry, Husky fans. Uh, I'm not downplaying your position. Uh, you are more impressive of the two, but the actual better game was the early game. Oh, those broadcast.
put 66 on them in 59 possessions. So this San Diego State team, again, 90.3 points per 100 possessions. That's really good. That's really, really good. Fourth in the country. In conference play, they were they were 99, which was still very good. Under 100, under a point per possession per 100 possessions is awesome. Excellent, excellent. 99, if, they, if that was the whole year, 99 would have been good still for the top 30 in the country. But I am just concerned, and again, we talked about it with Wes Reynolds in the last segment. This has to be a sheer, hey, we are going to slow this game to a halt, and we are going to try to beat you with a 55-possession game, 56-possession game. Slowest game San Diego State has played this year. They actually lost. Or, sorry, they won that one. The two slowest games, they're one-on-one in the sub-60 possession game. 57 against Wyoming, the last game of the regular season, one by 17. 59 against Boise, we already mentioned that they lost that game. 66-60. They're going to need a lot out of Trammell and Bradley. And look, they got a lot out of Bradley early tonight. They didn't get a lot as the game went along, but Bradley at 21 points. An offensive usage raise of 140. The only other person that was in double figures was Ladie. Ladie at 12. Butler, the hero, only had nine. It was not a lot of balance for San Diego State tonight. And against UConn, they're either going to need a dynamite performance, high-level performance by Matt Bradley, or they're going to need all their players to have a balanced effort. And I don't think San Diego State, with the way that UConn's defense has played in this tournament, we've already said it, one team – all five opponents under a point per possession. UConn's up to eighth in adjusted defense on Ken Palm. Where they started the tournament. Just out, just inside the top 20. So they've moved up double digit spots in this tournament. That's how dominant they have been on the defensive side of the ball here. And I'm just curious to see if UConn is able to keep this going, and they should be able to keep this going against a San Diego State offense that is 68th in the country, and that's what moving up double-digit spots in this tournament. They're not an offensive team. They're a defensive team. We've known this all year. Now, I'm curious here. There's one eight in Vegas. There's an eight and a half in a different book as well across the country. When does this start getting bought, getting bought down? Is eight the absolute peak? Eight and a half, a little bit. There's nine and a half. Oh, Dan Miller said nine and a half. I was like, whoa, wait a second. We got nine and a half. Dan Miller, Dan Miller from the top rope thinking nine and a half. I don't think we get there. I don't think we get there. If we get there, then it's going to be one way sharp action the other way. But you know, the thing is, with the way this tournament has gone for UConn, should we assume they're, they're going to play a single digit game here? Uh, from David Warlock, and I had some numbers off earlier. UConn joins these teams since 1985 to win their first five games by double figures in the tournament. 2000 Michigan State, they won the title. 01 Duke, kind of amazing that Maryland game was double figures, but it was. They won the title to beat Arizona in the title game. 09 North Carolina, one of the better teams we've seen in the last 30 years in college hoops. They did that. 16 Carolina. They're the only team in this list that is lost. Of course, they lost to the Chris Jenkins Brothers or Beater in Houston, Texas. And in 2018, Villanova, who I think is the second best team in the last 25 years. UConn joins them. UConn's the lowest seed of all these. All those other ones were one or two seeds. 2023 UConn, of course, as we know, a four seed. You look at the way that this run has gone. And going into the tournament, I was a non-believer in UConn because I did not think that they were capable of playing six straight games without the stupidity strain that they had during the beginning of the Big East season showing up. 
I was concerned about that once they go against elite competition. Now, thankfully for them, through this tournament, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Even with the dominance, assuming UConn wins on Monday night, they will have only beaten one top 10 Ken Bomb team in this run. They've taken advantage of the teams in front of them, and they have pounded them in, in route to this Final Four. They were fortunate Arkansas took out Kansas, even though, again, going into that game, I thought that game was a coin flip, and they destroyed Arkansas. Of course, the chaos in the bracket, I really, it's a shame Texas blew that game against Miami, because that would, I, I still think UConn would have beat Texas, but that at least would have been a good basketball game, and more competitive than what we got tonight. But in the end here, I'm probably not, I, I don't know if I'm going to have anything in pocket. I mean, at least not at seven and a half, I'm not. And I don't want anything to do with that total. That total feels right at 132. I don't want anything to do with that. But when push comes to shove here, the UConn Huskies are just so much better than everyone else in this NCAA tournament. They have been this whole tournament. And they're going to end up number one in Ken Palm as a four seed because of this dominant tournament run. They're going to end up being almost two points ahead of number two, especially if they dominate San Diego State. 